This training is to show you how to set up a new test method. So in your starting screen here, you choose method. I've already set up a new one, but if you were to set up a new one, you consider, am I doing a tensile test? Am I compressing something? Am I bending something? And you would choose that from one of these on the top. I've already made one and saved it, and which if you did that, they would show up down here. These are the most recent ones. If you made one a long time ago, you can just browse and find it in a folder. So I'm gonna just open the, the one I previously made and we'll run through all these tabs and show you what the important parts are. The first thing is my specimen. I have calipers here. I need to measure the dimensions of my specimen. This one is about a millimeter by five millimeters. And I can import those dimensions here. Basically, you consider what is the area that's being deformed or stretched in my sample. You want to take the cross section of that, and that's used to calculate stress from the load data of this test. So the width of my sample is five millimeters, and the thickness is one millimeter, and the cross section is a rectangular cross section. You may have circles, you may have tubes, things like that. This is only important if you need to know the stress at the end of the test. If you're just doing load displacement, this doesn't factor into any of the results. You're just getting raw data out of it. Um, for the next thing, uh, you would go to uh, measurements here. Basically, the only things you need to know are time displacement and force. You can calculate everything else based on that. For your calculations, you may want to know the peak stress or peak load. You may want to know Young's modulus or stiffness. You may want to know yield point or when the material starts to plastically deform. Those are all in this list. So where I got them from are, you know, peak, maximum, minimum was the force, uh, modulus here, and at the bottom, yield. And you can just click it and hit the arrow to make it go to the other side. Once you're in here, there are sometimes parameters that you can choose for each of those. For example, in the yield, I changed it from zero slope to offset. In material science, we're often doing like a 2.2% offset from the elastic modulus slope and go over and then say what is the force at that intersection. Um, when I choose these calculations, that enables me to input the values that these calculated into a results table, which is typically how I'm analyzing the data at the end. In my test control tab, what I'm doing is controlling the strain rate or how fast this is moving, which is dependent on usually the material type. If you're unsure of how fast it should move, Try to look up an ASTM test method. If you're part of Brigham, you have access to Harvard uh, Hollis, which is their online library database. And you can look up the database called ASTM Compass, which is the database of all ASTM standards. And you can look up ASTM standards for, let's say, elastomeric tensile testing. And it should tell you a millimeter per millimeter value, which says, if, uh, if this is my elastomer, I'm testing at 50 millimeters and it says one millimeter per millimeter. I would test at 50 millimeters per minute strain rate. Uh, so in my test here, I'm displacing the crosshead at 25 millimeters per minute. I actually, this is a custom setup, but I want to move this down to bend this aluminum strip. And so I'm using a compressive test method setup. And so it, it's going to move the crosshead down when I put a number in here. If it was a tensile method, this is going to move up. So that's how I can choose the original test method to, to start with. So it's going to move at about an inch a minute. You can change units if you needed to. At the end of the test, I'm going to say what qualifies the end of my test. I can choose a lot of different things. I can choose it goes a certain distance. That's what I did here. I can choose it goes for a set amount of time. Um, I can choose multiple methods. So basically this one, the way I've set it up, says move to 25 millimeters distance and then stop. Or if this test method comes up and the measurement drops 50% from a peak value after the load hits 0.1 newtons, then also stop the test. At the end of test, return to the original position where it was that helps me get the same starting position for all my tests and makes it a little more uh, easy to read at the end of the day and a little more consistent. Next in the console, which is this piece, uh, the live displays are going to be these two on the top, displacement and force. I wanna change the force to newtons here. For my soft keys, those are gonna appear down here and allows me to zero out displacement or load at any time. 
Um, in the workspace, I am going to have optional some, some inputs. If I have samples that change in thickness, for example, I can choose uh, thickness as one of these values where it's a little field I can fill in before each test. Sometimes I want to put in a label, so maybe I have different types of samples. I want to type in a different name of that sample. So you can include those as optional fields. In results, that's going to be a data table. That's probably one of the more important things. Um, you put from here, first specimen label is the most important. So under specimen properties, you can find specimen label in that list and then move it over. For the force, always in here, you want to put force into newtons instead of kilonewtons. In the graph, the same thing. In my Y data, I'm going to change the uh, kilonewtons to newtons so that it scales appropriately. You can change all a bunch of these things as well. Um, in raw data, this is the most important thing, actually. When I get my raw data out and I'm plotting it, I don't want to have kilonewtons because if I measured very small forces, it may appear as a bunch of zeros. And you'd have to go reopen the data to, to actually view it, or else it just won't be visible. So make sure in your raw data force that this is newtons. You can even go to millinewtons if it's very small. Um, then in your exports, export file one, you can turn this raw data on if you actually wanted to go plot x versus y or calculate stress on your own or strain. Uh, so ensure raw data is checked. And then create a file for each specimen is, is not turned on. So you can export just one file. After all of those things are done, you go up here, you save your test method, you can hit the, the finishing flag, and then basically uh, hit the home button, start your test, and you're going to choose that method that you just made. And this is what the screen looks like for all those things that I picked. So here's my operator inputs, here's my results table, here's my graph. If I want to go in and edit stuff, like how many samples appear on this graph, Say I test like four samples, and then I test sample five, and all the other graphs went away. That's because your number wasn't high enough here. I think there's a max of like 21. OK, so if you actually ran this test, I would balance my displacement, balance my load. It's going to move 25 millimeters per minute. I'll hit start. If you have important samples, start with a not important sample first, just to be testing your method. Test with a dummy sample. See it's moving, my data is plotting, so that's good. And then this should take about a minute, or if my force drops 50%, then the test would also stop. At the end of it, this would go back to its original position. So we'll pretend that actually happens. We'll just make it drop. Okay. And that's how you set up your test method and, and uh, check it within a simple test.